Hello, this is Suen from the Alternatives team in Singapore. Today, we've invited a private investments expert from New York, John and Kona, the co-head of our private equity due diligence team. We have three core themes in any given year to guide our allocation into selecting private managers to help us implement our view. So let's start with the first team, growth and innovation. John, can you talk about what are the subsectors in growth and innovation across tech, healthcare, and Asia that you're looking at? Yeah, I think those really are the three subsectors. Um, you know, we're, we're looking for long-term secular trends, and I'd be hard pressed to point to, to better ones than those today. Um, you know, thinking about technology, you know, 10 years ago, as Mark Andreessen said, uh, software is eating the world, and that's never been as true as it is today. If I look at the forward-looking projections for, for growth around cloud-based businesses, software-based businesses, you know, something like 20%, according to a lot of market sources out there, investing in companies that are digitally native and, and growing or adopting digital tools in the way they approach their business model, um, that's a core area for us. The idea even 12 months ago that we could develop a vaccine as quickly as we have was just unprecedented. Um, it's been great for the world that uh, you know we're on the cusp of vaccination you know, kind of globally, but those exact same innovation trends are things we're seeing across the pharmaceutical industry. Investing in biotech companies, which really are what, what are powering new drugs and new innovations for, for large pharma companies, something like two thirds of the blockbuster drugs out there were developed by small biotech. Uh, investing in those businesses privately at an early stage, we think is a really uh, interesting and attractive phenomenon. Um, and last but not least, when Asia, as you said, um, kind of is the supercharged version of both of those. Um, the adoption of technology, just leapfrogging some of the analog businesses that were developed originally in the West and going straight to digital solutions, you know, not needing plastic cards and having forms of payment that live exclusively on your phone. That's the way um, the world in Asia works. Similarly, healthcare models going straight to telemedicine, um, as an example, um, a trend that we're looking to actively invest behind. So on to the next theme of real assets and durable yield, we continue to see a huge annual spending need in infrastructure, and we've also taken a very innovative approach to investing into real estate this coming year. And in yield, we're also seeing that banks have retreated from lending to middle market companies, and we still see an illiquidity premium to traditional fixed income. So can you touch on these three subsector themes in this bucket? Yeah, I would say the illiquidity premium there is, is really the place to start. In a world where 10-year treasuries are you know, sub 100 basis points, um, looking at alternative forms of yield is really interesting to us. Um, you know, I would start with infrastructure and real estate where we think there's the downside protection of you know, um, inflation protection. And there's also this ability to capture cap rate arbitrage, um, investing in things like opportunistic infrastructure where we're taking a little bit more operational risk, but you know, building to core and ultimately monetizing that long-term stream of cash flows from a core infrastructure asset to a sovereign wealth buyer, a pension fund, or another institutional investor is a really interesting way to, to generate a you know private equity type return, um, but taking some, you know something we think is is a little bit less risky than otherwise. Um, you know, real estate um, outside of infrastructure, looking at some of the trends that are coming out of COVID, um, which we just talked about. Commercial real estate is going to be totally different um, over the next 10 years versus the last. And similarly, as the world retrenches uh, supply chains, um, the ability to invest in logistics and um, you know, uh, related opportunities, we think is, is a really interesting phenomenon. And maybe last but not least within private credit, um, so as you said, banks are no longer the marginal lender. Um, 85, 86% of uh, leveraged loans actually come from non-bank forms of finance. It, as we think about what we're investing in on the equity side, all those buyouts that are gonna happen given uh, the dry powder that's out there, well, every one of those buyouts needs 45 cents of debt and being the provider of that debt on, on a junior basis, able to extract a premium interest rate, but still have all that equity subordination below, we think it's a pretty interesting way to, to balance risk and return and attractive asset class to invest behind. Now on to the third theme of opportunistic and value oriented. I would say this is the category that was most exciting in 2020, especially with the COVID pandemic disrupting markets. Now we still continue to see a number of niche dislocations as well as some distress opportunities. Can you touch a bit about what we're looking into the space here? 
Yeah, of course. We're always looking at uh, distressed opportunities because we think it's a nice hedge to the rest of the portfolio, right? Um, I don't have a, a sharper crystal ball than anyone else. Um, and I want to build a portfolio that can work in all sorts of market environments. Um, that said, you know, we do think we're more on the up and up and, and, and a recovery trajectory here as we em emerge from COVID. Um, and so, you know, I don't expect distress to be quite as large a portion of our portfolio going forward. Instead, we're looking at where there's aspects of volatility, what we've seen in public equity markets recently, uh, the GameStop trade, those sorts of things. Um, there are ways to monetize that, whether that's taking structured equity where we can get warrants attached, you know, as a potential equity kicker. Uh, or even looking at a fund that potentially invests in capital structure arbitrage around um, the SPAC phenomenon. Some of those sort of idiosyncratic ideas we think are you know, interesting ways to, to complement our portfolio in the growth and innovation and, and diversified yield categories. We have now covered a number of exciting themes across the three core themes in our private investments outlook. Stay tuned for how to implement these themes in a private investment portfolio, and we will also cover how to build private equity portfolios. Thank you. Thank you.